throw that out there. And, and um, I, I guess uh, why don't we open it up to questions and see uh, any um, any questions for some of the, for the panelists here? Or any any comments? Yes, thank you all. Those were very good comments. Um, I do have a question, and maybe you all have already answered this, and, you, and you're doing this already. But it, it would seem like some of the some of the problems are money for small farmers. Um, what Vernon has tried with the you know whether you call it a buying club, a group, they're always coming up with some new regulation. Is there some way that we can't literally just? join up with someone who wants to farm and others of us who want the food but don't want to farm to literally become true owners of that farm so that we we have that commitment because it is ours it's not just food that we're getting from someone but we truly are part of that farm and maybe we eventually go on to become a farmer somewhat ourselves sorry. Uh, but that we just we, we go that one step further from becoming part of a club that have real farms that are small like but maybe you were saying it mark I, I, I think that's a really good point i mean i i've long thought i come from a business background i i've uh, been a business journalist and uh, I, i've written about uh, investment and entrepreneurship and i've long thought that you know one of the very interesting things that, that people could do is to actually Buy, and I think what you're saying is buy, buy, buy a share, or, or you know, or, or, or um, be a, a partner with with actual, you know, you own 10 percent of the farm, or and you have a, an actual equity ownership in that uh, in that land and the buildings and the equipment. I'd like to comment a little bit on that because I think also one of the things each one of us are from a different state, but there's also national policy that prevent for that sharing of food to actually occur. I mean, if we look back in history, and I am not an expert by any means, but the general, the general idea is there used to be agistral laws where there were herd shares, there were people that in common law would go and be a part of exactly what you're saying, owning herd shares and owning part of the farms. And these were common law, uh, common laws, common law, in for rules that came through history. Somewhere along the line, we became so disconnected through uh, lobbyist laws, people, I mean, the lawyers. <laughs> we became disconnected from our food. Well, and, and our food, but we gave up our freedom over the general health, safety, and welfare as it is used against us. So somewhere along the line, we not only became, yes, disconnected from our food and the earth and our farmers, but also we forgot that we actually have the right to have those laws. And it is part of the history of uh, not only America, but humans. This is, this is our history. So we have to become empowered and aware of really what our, our history and what our uh, inheritance is in a way. And to take responsibility for that takes courage. And it takes, you know, you showing up or taking part in these programs that allow for your you to be a part of the community. Everybody here is. So I, I mean I'm so honored to be part of not only this trial and what's going on, but to see this community growing. Because each one of us, you know, it, it's like the idea where you plant a seed and that that plant grows, but how many how many seeds come from that one seed? Exponential amounts. So I I do believe that if we take um, responsibility, but also understand our history, that we can get back to that place and really take take control of um, what we've lost. <laughs> I can comment on that too. Um, I'll just comment on what my my situation was. Uh, I was ordered to uh, depopulate my pigs by April 1st, 2012. And I discussed it with my lawyer and my family. And uh, what I did was I told them, no. <laughs> if you want to see a wrench get thrown in the works, because Government is used to you good little people doing what you're told. But when you dissent and you say no, they really don't know what to do. So you, you have to be prepared to do that. And you know you might take some lumps along the way. You might. But you have to be prepared to do that. And we, 
we got to look back in our history where our freedom comes from. When we look back to, you know, 1774, there were people that lost their lives for the freedom that we enjoy now. And uh, so you, you have to be prepared to do what you have to do. You have to be prepared to tell them no when they don't have the authority. You might lose. Hey, that's the way it goes. We had a great case in Kentucky where people did that. John Moody's Food Club in, in, in uh, outside Louisville where the uh, inspectors came by one Friday afternoon, just about two, it was two years ago, right on Memorial Day, I think, weekend. They came by on Friday afternoon and put a, uh, a uh, quarantine on the milk and uh, I think it was for about 60 or 70 people and John put out the word that uh, people should come and, and pick up their milk and there was a statement they could each sign that said uh, basically um, I'm taking my milk despite the quarantine and if you want to discuss it with me here's my phone number and uh, I think 40 out of the 60 or so or 70 people actually came and, and signed the statement and the health department backed off that was um, they, 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 they can go after one or two or even three people but they can't go after 30 or 40 or 50 people and moms and moms especially yeah <laughs> So there, there, uh, I, I, so there, there is that. Uh, there definitely is opportunity. And that's what they're most afraid of. That's really what they're most afraid of. There's the other nice little quotable line uh, Mahatma Gandhi said: "Be the change you want to see in the world." And there's, there's no worldwide sweeping solution, but there's, you know, you can, you can personally and individually find a farm. You can make a statement with your money where you spend it. You can you can do a lot, just but to do nothing is to acquiesce. Exactly. Any other questions, comments? Well, I have kind of comment that statement. Is that a lot of people look at our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and they wonder, well, oh, geez, look at these guys. They wrote this stuff 200, 300 years ago. Well, let's look at the perspective of where these people came from and authored this. They were living under tyranny. They had inspiration to write that document. Right now, we have to recognize we're heading towards the tyranny they escaped from. Heading towards it? We're heading for it. <laughs> we may be already we're there. <laughs> no, but as far as Vernon is concerned, we're already there. We I'm still afraid. are gathered here, so no, we're not there yet. Right, right. I, I think that's a good point. And that the way works. I sound off sometimes, I think I'm going to be a resident of Guantanamo Bay before too long. I'll tell you. I contact my senators and congressmen sometimes a couple times a week. And I'm not very politically correct. Well, part of this is, is a challenge of educating the politicians because they, you know, they're just people and they're, they're just, uh, uh, and the same with the judges. I mean, they've grown as distant as the general population is from their food. And, uh, and you know, it's clear this judge here has no, no idea, has no appreciation of food or the, or the importance of food and, uh, and, and doesn't attach much value to it. So that's kind of, so we get the kind of decisions we're, we're getting from them. But that's uh, been true pretty much across the board. That kind of leads me to, um, to my question. You know, we've talked about what individuals, as individuals, we need to do. So how do we then relate this question to the public system, the, the public health officials that believe they're doing what's best for people? Um, the educators who believe they are teaching the right ways to, you know, answer the question and follow the rules and respect authority and, and to do as they're told. Um, how do we address that? The, the, the people who work for DATCAP, as you've mentioned, they, they honestly, some of them, believe they're working for the best interests of the public. How do we educate them? Well, um, like Ajna said, it's the planting of the seeds. And I think that one of the 